Here we go. Uh, I'm Bob Beal. Really happy to have you with us. Um, I'd like to give you a phrase to memorize. This is a phrase to memorize, and that is, God made me. God made you. He made you different than any other person alive, different than your mother, different than your father, your uncle, your aunt, your brother, different from your famous grandfather. God made you. So basically say to yourself, God made me. Also, God made all the people that report to you as unique, different people. There are probably a hundred different dimensions of you that God made. To this morning, we can only cover maybe four. Uh, it's trying to cover a lot, a lot in 20 minutes. Uh, but uh, when you say God made me, there are at least four areas I'd like, to, I'd like to cover with you. First of all, God uh, made you with a specific dream. Uh, I'd like to share with you this I want chart. The I want chart is basically your bucket list. In your bucket list, there are certain things you're trying to work out in your life. Who are you trying to be? And B, and it goes from one to 10. Basically make a list of this when we uh, get off and when you have a few minutes. Who are you trying to be? Be a Christian, a father, a mother, a, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, a mentor. Who are you trying to be in life? And then what are you trying to do? Sometime before you die, what would you like to do? And then what would you like to have? Sometime before you die, your dream, what you'd like to do sometime before you die, You'd like to have this and then help. Who would you like to help? Your, who would you like to help in terms of a person, an organization, or a cause? Who would you like to help? Maximum of 10. Doesn't have to be 10, but maximum of 10. And then lastly, who would you like to leave? Five years after you're dead, two years. 20 years after you're dead, after you leave this earth, what are, the, what are the things you'd really like to leave behind you that you'd like to go on and on? And then you come back to these 10 or so, and you uh, basically star the top three. Uh, star them uh, three times, the top three in each category, each column. And then go to the top two, star those uh, two times. And then what's the number one? Star that once. Just basically make that so you have one star in terms of if you could only be one person, who is that? Or one, if you could only do one thing in your life, what would you do? If you could only have one thing in your life, what would you have? Help and leave. This is a quick look at it. I'm not going to go into detail here because we don't have time. But you're trying to figure out sometime before you die, who are you trying to be? What would you like to do? What would you like to have? Who would you like to help? And what would you like to leave? This is your bucket list. Before you, quote, kick the bucket or die, what would you like to be, do, have, help, leave? This is your life. This is your life dream. This is what you want to do sometime before you die. Uh, this is what you want to get clear because this is your life dream. This is a life dream you have that no one else has. Your mother doesn't, your father doesn't, your siblings don't, your grandparents don't. This is a dream that you have. That's what you're trying to get clear. And you're basically saying to yourself, God made me. Hopefully to accomplish all this. Now, what you're going to find is that a week after you, after you fill it out, you're going to come back to it and you're going to say, you know what? Some of the things I thought a week ago, and I've been thinking for a long time, I don't really want to do anymore. I don't want to have anymore. It's not really important to me anymore. Well, erase it. Fill this out in pencil, not in pen. This is something that changes. It, it adjusts. It changes over time. Fill it out in pencil. And what you're going to find is this is your life dream. Get it clear out there how you are unique, what you see that other people don't see.
again, God made me, is what you're saying to yourself. Secondly, you want to define what is your single greatest strength? Of all the things you do well, what do you do best? How did God make you different than your parents, different than your siblings, different than your grandparents, different than the people you've, quote, been comparing yourself with over the years? By the way, don't compare yourself with anyone. If you compare yourself, you're going to feel either superior to them or inferior to them, neither one of which is good. Basically, say, God made me. I am me. I'm not someone else. I don't want to compare myself with anyone else. So as you look at yourself, what is your single greatest strength? What do you do best? The reason you look at this is to maximize you, to say, I'm not going to try to just get by in life. I'd like to do the best I can do. I want to be the best I can be. I, I want to maximize me. The way you look at that single greatest strength is one way. You basically say, if I could put into a single word, a single word, what my unique strength is, what would that word be? What would it be? Then next, you say, what do I find easy that other people seem to find hard? Uh, you may say right off, well, I don't think I find anything easy that other people find hard. Well, think about it again, because you may find that there are certain things that you find very easy that other people don't find easy at all. And then next, what do you never tire of doing? You say, I get tired in life, but I never tire of doing this. Those, those reflections right in there are things that will give you a feel of your single greatest strength. A friend of mine, uh, we were talking one day and I asked him, I said, Nathan, what do you, wh what's your single greatest strength? He said, I don't know. I said, well, think about it. We've got a few minutes, think about it. What, what do you do best? He said, I don't know. I said, we've got time, think about it. And then he got, began to get a little bit frustrated with me, which is appropriate. <laughs> he, he said, I don't know. And I said, well, think about it. If you could put into a word what you do best, what would it be? And it may be, not be a word you've ever heard anyone use before in describing themselves or, or, or just as an adjective to, to, to look at who they are. He said, the only word that comes to mind is piercer. I said, it's a great word. Uh, what does it mean? He said, I don't know. He said, I just seem to have the ability, whenever a problem comes up, just to pierce right through the middle of it. I said, Nathan Berkey, you are a piercer. That's your unique strength. You're a piercer. Well, as you sit back and reflect, what is your single greatest strength? What word would you use to describe what you do best, what you find easy that other people seem to find very difficult or impossible? The third thing, again, this is the third of maybe a hundred ways you describe yourself or a hundred uniquenesses you have. But the third one would be a team profile. There are five stages an idea goes through. When an idea comes into reality, it's in a design phase. It's, it's a theory phase. It's just being designed. Then it goes into a design develop phase where it's not only designed, but it's beginning to de be developed up to the first prototype. Then the third phase is develop, where you actually have it developed and it's beginning to go and it's, it's beginning to be successful. And then the third phase is design, it is develop, stabilize. That's where it's going but it's, it's, it's got problems, it's refining. You're refining the problems that are in the development stage. And then the last phase is the stable phase where it's running smoothly, it's running exactly the way it's supposed to. So every idea that's ever been developed goes through a design phase, design, develop, 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 stable, and stable. You may say, what gave you the first clue, Sherlock? Uh, everybody knows that. I say, yes. But did you realize you prefer one of those phases to the other four? And all the people that work for you prefer one of those phases to the other four. And when you decide, decide which of those four phases you prefer, it lets you know basically uh, where you're the most comfortable. 
Are you the most comfortable designing things or stabilizing things? And every person on your team prefers one of those to the other. And it basically lets you know how do, who should we put in charge of designing things? Who should we put in, in charge of stabilizing th things? And this doesn't have to do with gender. Uh, the, uh, a female can prefer design and a male stabilize, or a female can uh, prefer stabilize and a male uh, design. It doesn't matter. And then there, there's another dimension here. It's not only the five phases, but there are three levels. Some people prefer to be the presidential captain. They want to be in charge of everything. They want to be the president. They want to be the top dog where the buck stops. They want to be the executive director, the senior pastor. They want to be in charge. Some people say, oh, no, don't put me in charge. I want to be the middle captain. I want to be someone else over me, but I want to be a captain, but I want to be a middle captain. Other people say, I want to be a strong player. Don't ask me to be in charge of any team at all. I want to be a middle cap. I want to be a strong player. When you can define which of the five phases you prefer and which level you prefer, it gives you a lot of perspective on who you are, who God made you to be, who God made me. He made me a designer. He made me a developer. He made me a stabilizer. And he made me uh, a middle captain or a, or a presidential captain. Or, that's what I've, that, what I've developed over the years, the experiences I've had over the years, God has used to make me prefer to be the presidential captain or middle captain or strong player. Your team profile is another uniqueness you've got that your mother or your father may be very different than you are there. The fourth area is your leadership orientation where you're saying some people want to be the the uh, the goal setter some people are oriented to what is the goal where is the goal how do we get to the goal their goal or that's about 15 percent of all the leaders i've ever dealt with i've ever i've ever enc encountered only about 15% are goal oriented. You say, well, don't you have to have goals to be a leader? Oh, no, 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 no. Many of the leaders I've dealt with were problem solvers, not goal setters at all. Now, you may be a goal setter or you may be a problem solver. About 85, 80% 80 of the people I've dealt with are problem solvers. And then about 5% are opportunity oriented. They say, don't bother me with goals. Don't bother me with problems. Let me know uh, what the opportunity is and I come alive. A goal-oriented person wants to add something, want to add a building, want to add a staff, want to add something. A problem solver wants to fix something. They wants to fix the computer or fix the building or fix the situation. An opportunity-oriented person wants to grab something, say, we didn't see it last week, but look at this opportunity we've got. And if we don't grab it now, it's gone within a month. That's opportunity that we couldn't anticipate. It's gone soon. But right now, if we grab this opportunity, it's there. That's about 5% of the leaders you'll ever meet. Are there the primary orientation? It's like the way I look at things, the way I orient my life, the way I orient my day is either goals or problems or opportunities. Now, you can say, well, Bob, I'm a combination of those things. Yes, you are. But there's also, you have to ask yourself the question of the three, which do I most naturally think about? What do I most, where's my most natural orientation? Not could I do it, but if I could, what would I want to do? Would I want to be, uh, would I want to see the opportunity and seize it? Would I want to see the problem and solve it or fix it? Would I want to see the goal and reach it? Which am I by nature? How did God make you? You may say to yourself, let's just review it for a minute. You may say, God made me with this dream. Number one, with this dream. You may say, well, God made me with this strength. God built this strength into me. You may say, well, God, uh, God made me a designer, a designer, developer, 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 stabilizer, or a stabilizer. And he may, he, through life, he's oriented me 
to be the presidential captain or middle captain or a strong player. You may say, God made me in such a way that my whole orientation is a goal setter or a problem solver or a, an opportunity seizer. As you see these four things, what combination are you? And you see that that's <laughs> possibly very, 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 very different than your father or your mother or your wife or husband or your siblings or your grandparents or your friends. Keep saying to yourself, God made me. Don't try to be someone else. And keep looking at trying to understand your uniqueness. How did God make you? And how did he make the other people on your team? How did he make those people? And how do you understand them in a way that lets you maximize how God made them?